Hello, welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we will be discussing everything you need to know about wiring solar panels. We have a complete wiring diagram and a few practical key points prepared to share with you. As you may know, this is part two of our off-grid solar wiring video series. If you haven't seen part one yet, we highly recommend checking it out before following this video. It will give you a clear idea of the diagram we're working with. Before we start following the solar panel wiring diagram, it is essential to share this message with all of you. Usually, solar panels are mounted on rooftops or higher places. Therefore, it is important to take maximum safety precautions. Furthermore, once you connect the solar panels together, the total DC voltage rises to around 450 to 500 volts in a 5000 to 5500 watts inverter setups. This is a high-risk process, so please be aware of what you are doing if you have any doubts. It's recommended to seek professional support for the solar panel installation before it is too late. In today's video, we will be discussing this solar panel wiring diagram. Let's get started. It may seem simple, but I encourage you to stay till the end of the video. We will explain each component and provide some great tips that you'll find helpful. Wiring the grid connection, battery in, and inverter out was explained in the previous video. Most inverters on the market today don't require a parallel solar panel connection, however. You may come across inverters with more than one PV input, which we will talk about soon. Let's assume that these panels are 550 watts each, which makes the open circuit voltage 49.9 volts for each panel, so. The total system will have 5,500 watts power with 499 volts in DC, with the inverter supporting up to 6,000 watts of solar power. These panels could be a great match for it. It allows for optimal utilization of the inverter's capacity, making it a perfect combination for an efficient solar setup. Since we have selected the right solar panel for the inverter, let's wire it up. The series connection of the wiring starts with one end of the solar panel let's begin with the negative wire leave the first negative wire for the inverter then connect the positive wire of the same panel with the negative wire of the next panel check the diagram for the plus and minus marks follow the connections accordingly until you reach the other end as we started by leaving the negative wire for the inverter connection in the other end the positive wire should be free for the inverter connection double check the connections and Ensure they match the wiring diagram accurately. Attention, here's a safety tip. As mentioned earlier, the PV voltage of the panel array can reach 500 volts. Hence, we must take extra care to avoid any accidental contact between the negative and positive ends of the PV array. To avoid this risk, we can follow a simple tip. Keep the PV array wiring loop disconnected from one place by doing so. Even if you accidentally touch both wires, there's no risk of getting an electrical shock. It's a smart safety measure that can help to protect you. During the wiring process, usually the solar panels come with MC for connectors. Therefore, next step is to connect the MC for fuse. Why use the MC for fuse? Consider purchasing this product. To add an extra layer of protection to your solar system, the fuse holder is designed to offer complete single circuit protection. For your solar power array, diffuses play a crucial role in preventing damage to the solar panels caused by large currents. Next, we need to do the wiring up to the slow blow DC fuse holders. For the wiring you need to use photovoltaic wires, also known as PV wires, because usually these wire had XLPE, cross-link polyethylene insulation, a thermoset, zero halogen insulation that also provides flame retardants. This wiring can be used for the entire life of a solar panel, which can last 25 to 30 years. Now it's time to wire the slow blow fuse connectors. Here's a closer view of the slow blow fuse holder and the fuse. You can select the right fuse for your system. The brands displayed are a bit popular in the market. However, if you can find a better quality product in your local market, please feel free to use it. From the slow blow fuse, we need to feed the wires into the SPD. Since it has L plus and L minus marked, we need to make sure the right wire goes into the right place. Before we go further, 
it's better to clear out the doubts. What is a slow blow fuse and why install a slow blow fuse in series with the SPD? This is a common question for most of us, so let's talk about it. I think my friend has a better explanation. So let's hear it from him. Thanks, and hi guys. First, we will talk about the difference between a slow blow fuse and a fast blow fuse. If you ask, is it possible to replace a faulty slow blow fuse with a fast acting fuse or vice versa? The answer is no. These two fuses have different properties and applications. While both fuses serve the purpose of disconnecting the circuit during overcurrent or short circuit situations, they achieve this using different methods. A slow blow fuse disconnects the circuit only when the overcurrent situation persists in the supply line. It is not an instantaneous action. On the other hand, a fast acting fuse immediately disconnects the circuit as soon as overcurrent is detected. For the fast acting fuse, it is an instant job. Next we will discuss why does the surge protection device have a fuse in series. Surge protection devices limit transient overvoltages and divert surge currents in low voltage power distribution and information systems protecting against lightning overvoltages, operational overvoltages, lightning electromagnetic pulses and electromagnetic interference pulses. If the surge current exceeds the SPD's maximum capacity, it can fail and cause a short circuit fault. To prevent this, install a circuit breaker or fuse. Lightning strikes cause aging of the SPD, especially if the current persists for long periods, leading to overheating. The thermal protection system of the circuit breaker or fuse should disconnect the SPD before it reaches its maximum heat tolerance. Furthermore, in cases requiring high voltage protection, you may need to install lightning arresters. Hope, my explanation was clear on fuse types and using SPDs with fuse in series. Thanks for the informative explanation. So back to the off-grid solar wiring diagram. Moving forward, next we have the two-pole DC MCB. You can also use a DC isolator instead of the MCB. What is better, DC MCB? versus DC isolator. MCBs are better for protection. As they are current limiting devices, some rumors say using MCBs might increase fire risk. The choice is yours, but if you choose MCB over an isolator, better use one that supports more current than required so it will reduce the heating. Note, for using more than two strings, in parallel, it's recommended to use current limiting devices, MCBs. In some countries, Isolators are required on rooftops. Not sure if it applies to off-grid, but if so, use waterproof enclosures. In the previous video, we used a non-polarized DC MCB for batteries, but for PV, you can use a polarized MCB. MCB is numbered 1, 2, 3, and 4. Use 1 and 3 for the load input. Now, we are ready to connect the PD input to the inverter. Before doing so, make sure the inverter is powered off and the grid input is turned off as well. Also, double check the connections to ensure that the plus wire goes to the plus connection of the inverter and the minus wire goes to the minus connection. Once the PV input is connected, next connect the ground wires. It is better to use a direct wire for the solar panel grounding and connect the other ground wires using earth bar. Since many of us have different views on grounding strategies, we will have a separate video dedicated to grounding methods in the future. In that video, we will share our recommended grounding method. And you can also share your thoughts on the best grounding approach. Let's plan to do this soon. Finally, connect the MC for connector that we kept unplugged for safety reasons. Now that your solar panel wiring is complete, your system is ready for operation, but wait, it's not the end of the video, as promised. We have some valuable tips for solar panel mounting. Solar panel mounting tips. The angle of your solar panel plays a crucial role in maximizing its efficiency on clear days. Align the panel directly towards the sun for maximum power. If it's cloudy, tilt it straight up for optimal energy yield throughout the year. A fixed angle with an azimuth facing the equator and a tilt angle approximately 10 degrees below the latitude is generally recommended. However, 
This may vary depending on local climate conditions, including sunlight levels during the summer and the presence of a monsoon climate. Take these factors into account when deciding the best angle for your solar panels. Common roof slopes range from 22.5 to 15 degrees, but even 10 degrees sufficient to prevent water from pooling on the solar panel glass or frame edge. Panels mounted below 10 degrees may not stay as clean with only rainwater. Using double glass panels without frames can help, but they are an expensive option and typically require yearly maintenance to check the tension on the clamps holding them in place. Here's a video that demonstrates how solar panels can collect dirt and water when the angle is not properly adjusted. It highlights the importance of setting the right angle to ensure optimal performance and prevent debris buildup. My friend is adding some water to demonstrate the practical situation, showing how water can accumulate on solar panels and the angle is not set correctly. As shown in this demonstration video, when the solar panel angle is set correctly, the water will flow smoothly without getting stacked. Please note that this video clip was only used for demonstration purposes and we apologize for any inconvenience caused by the camera angle. Hope the clip was helpful in understanding the solar panel installation angle. Next we will talk about mounting and grounding solar panels. We won't discuss the basics of mounting solar panels, since there are plenty of videos covering that. Instead, we'll explore cool mounting accessories that enhance installation, optimize functionality, and provide long-term protection, giving your setup a professional look. Use solar cable clips instead of standard cable ties. For rooftop cable arrangements, they provide more durability and can securely hold up to two wires. Earlier, we used jumper wires to ground the solar panel array. Now you get an earth plate grounding clip. These connectors and clips are used to organize the earth wire or the earth rod. We believe that we have almost covered everything and we have reached the, the end of this video. And here's a quick overview. In this video, we have covered how to wire solar panels. In a off-grid solar system, importance of different types of fuses, importance of slow blow fuse in series with SPD, safety tips, solar panel mounting angle, mount solar panels like a pro. If you found this video informative and valuable, please consider liking and subscribing to our channel. Thank you for watching. And we look forward to sharing more DIY videos in the future. Stay tuned.